Hey guys, welcome back to Life of Bliss. Have you ever thought about making your own DIY speakers? Is it worth the time and money to do so? Well, today in this video, I'm going to be going over my experience with some DIY towers that I made and comparing them with some manufactured towers. The two speakers we're going to be looking at today is the Polk flagship LSIM 707 tower, and I'll be comparing them to the Meniscus Audio Kit, the Swope tower that I made a couple years back. First, we'll take a look at the Polk Audio Tower. I bought these roughly three months ago for home theater duty in my basement. Standing at over 50 inches tall and weighing in at 100 pounds each, these things are absolute monsters. Without getting into too many specs, these are 8 ohm speakers, a 4 way design, have dual ported woofers, each with its own separate chamber, and is rated for up to 300 watts. The grill on the front is magnetic and can easily be removed. Now here's the kicker with the Polks. The MSRP for one of these towers is $2,000. That is $4,000 for the pair of speakers here. Now street pricing is quite a bit below that. It's actually about half price, but you're still looking at $2,000 for the set of speakers. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the Meniscus Audio Swope Towers. The Swope Tower is a three-way design that uses high vi woofers and in this case uses an upgraded tweeter option with an SB acoustic tweeter. The speaker is 4 ohms, has a single port design for the two 6 inch woofers, and is a very popular kit in the DIY community because of its excellent value. Overall I think the towers turned out awesome. I really like the light copper drivers, uh, how they contrast with the gloss black and it's just a super clean design for a tower so I really enjoyed making these and really liked how they turned out. So here's the best part. The components for two towers is $600. That means that one speaker is only $300 versus $1,000 for the Polks. But that doesn't really mean much if they don't sound good, right? Well, I spent about two hours comparing these two, listening to clips from the Hans Zimmer Live in Prague, Metallica Through the Never, and Inception Blu-rays. The receiver used was a Yamaha RXA 3070, and I sent everything through my Emotiva LPA1 amp, which has about 125 watts on tap per channel. When comparing, the first thing I noticed was the bass output from the 707s. They really have some bass. With some songs and scenes, it sounded great. Others, it was a bit too much, and started sounding a bit muddy and hard to decipher what was going on. The mids and highs seemed like they weren't keeping up, and this was even after running Yamaha's tuning software for the Polks. The Swope Towers have some awesome bass as well, but they are tuned to 40 hertz and didn't dig down as deep as the Polks. But honestly, I didn't feel like I was missing anything because they seemed to blend with the mids and highs much better. The real eye-opener between the two was the mids and highs. The Polks have a very mellow and flat sound. Nothing really jumps out at you and voices seem to blend in more with music or effects going on in the movie. With the Hans Zimmer Blu-ray, listening for each instrument and picking it out was possible, but it wasn't as easy as I'd hoped. The Swopes, on the other hand, these things beat the Polks hands down in the mids and highs. The sound stage was bigger, everything sounded more detailed and natural, and the voices were more prominent and clear. There were some instruments and sounds in the Hans Zimmer Blu-ray that I had heard for the first time when I switched to these speakers. When going back to the Polks, that separation wasn't there and they just got blended into the background it seemed. Overall I tried to go with what made me smile more while I was listening to it to be honest, and the Swopes did it for me most of the time. And to try to prove that I'm not being biased over the speakers that I made versus store-bought speakers, I actually had my wife and one of my neighbors come down and do a blind listening test to each, and both of them actually preferred the Swope Towers over the Polks as well. Uh, my wife actually made the comment that the Swope Towers filled the front of the room up a little bit more with sound and had a bigger sound stage. So how can a $300 speaker compete with a $1,000 speaker? That's because you're only spending the money on the components, the woofers, the tweeter, and the crossover components. Everything else is up to you to make. You're not paying for the manufacturing, you're not paying for the finish work, you're not paying for this nice fancy magnetic grill that comes with it, and you're not paying to ship this big 100 pound bulky item. Granted, you will have to spend some time finishing everything versus just buying it off the shelf, but not only can you say that you've made this yourself, 
you can build it to match your style or your colors in your home or anything like that. I chose to paint these gloss black with auto body paints, but you can put veneer on these, stain them, even roll them with bed liner. I ended up lining my subwoofer I built a few years back with Duplicolor bed liner, and that thing is bulletproof. It's made two cross country moves, and I often use it as a step stool, and there are almost no blemishes on this thing. Now these are just two examples of the thousands of DIY and manufactured speakers that you can buy on the market. Not every DIY kit is going to sound better than a similar manufactured speaker, but hopefully this video has shown you that after a little bit of work, a DIY kit speaker can compete with a manufactured speaker and be a fraction of the cost. Let me know in the comments if you guys have made any DIY speaker kits and compared them to any similar manufacturer setups and what your thoughts were. So guys, I made most of this video about three weeks ago when I was listening to everything between the two. And going back over the footage, I really wasn't trying to downplay the Polks. I think they are incredible speakers for the money. I think they looked incredible. Uh, I was more just trying to say, you know, if you wanted to go the DIY route, you really don't have to spend as much money when you're going to be making your own cabinets as you would buying something from a store to get some really high quality sound. That being said, you'll notice the Polks aren't down here anymore. I ended up selling those and using the money to buy something a little bit different for down here that should be a huge upgrade for not only the Polks, but what I currently have running now. So be sure to check back for that, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys soon.